Okay, everybody, we're back. Mr. Shua again, and we're going to continue with the Algebra 2 Spring 2014 SOL, and we're starting with question 11, okay? So, which statement illustrates the symmetric property of equality? Now, the symmetric property, in case you don't remember, is if A equals B, then B equals A. Symmetry, symmetric. Okay, then we need to look through each of these and see if they're actually symmetric. Let's see, if 7 square root of x plus 17i equals 49i, then 7x, 7 square root of x plus 17i equals 40. Well, that's just restating the same thing here, so that's not symmetric. Okay, let's look at B. If 7 square root of x plus 17i equals 49i, then 49i equals 7 square root of x plus 17i. Well, here, if a equals b, and we can treat this first part as a, this part is b, then b equals a. That is the definition of the symmetric property, so b is our answer. Okay, let's move on to question 12. Okay. Directions. Click on the box to choose each expression you want to select. You must select all correct expressions. Now, it says identify each expression that's equivalent to I. So, I, if, as your teachers have shown you, you should know that I, or just if I did first is the square root of negative 1, I squared is actually negative 1, I cubed is negative I, and i to the fourth is one, and then this pattern repeats for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, if you can re recognize this pattern and pick out the ones here, which uh, work for this here, or if you don't remember the pattern, you could use something on your calculator called I part. And the way we use I part is we go to math num option three i part and then let's try i to the 47 first so we'll just type in i to the 47 and that's negative i so that doesn't match for us all right so let's try the next one again we go math num option three i part and let's try i to the 33rd, 33rd. That indeed does equal i. So that one works. Then math num i part, second period for i, caret i to the 21st. That indeed equals i. So those two work. And then lastly, math num i part, second period, so that's i to the 15, that's negative i, so that one doesn't work. So the only two are i to the 33rd and i to the 21st. Okay, hopefully you got that one. That one was simple. Let's move on to question 13. All right, oh, complex fraction. Assuming no denominator equals zero, which expression is equivalent to the given expression? We have n minus 15 over 9n divided by 15 minus n over 3n to the fifth. And the way that you can answer this, here's our expression here. Now, this is a division line. So if I just turn the division line around like this, it's still n minus 15 over 9n divided by 15 minus n over 3n to the fifth. Now, what do we do with division of fractions? We turn it to multiplication, and then we flip the second uh, fraction, or let's take the reciprocal of the second fraction, so that we have n minus 15 over 9n times 3n to the fifth over 15 minus n. Then here we could cancel out uh, 3 and the 9 here, and then the n's here. So 
that would give us n simply n to the fourth here and then just simply three here so what we have is n minus 15 over 3 times n to the fourth over 15 minus n now if you remember this is from rational expressions unit 6 multiply this first fraction by negative 1 when we do that negative 1 over negative 1 which is really just 1 because this will change from n minus 15 to 15 minus n. Why? Because negative 1 times n is negative n. Negative 1 times 15 is a positive 15. So that's just a 15 minus n over negative 3. Then if we multiply 15 minus n over negative 3 times n to the fourth over 15 minus n, well, these two 15 minus n's cancel each other out, leaving us n to the fourth over negative 3. Then, the only one that fits that is choice A, negative, right? Okay, let's move on to question 14. I like that one. Okay, what is the solution set of the square root of 8x minus 1 plus 4 equals 8? Well, this one is relatively easy to work on. First thing we're going to do is subtract 4, both sides of the equation we would get the square root of 8x plus 1 equals 4. Since we have this radical, we want to get rid of the radical since it's a square root. We're going to square both sides of the equation. So the square root of x of 8x minus 1 squared is simply the 8x minus 1. And then 4 squared is 16. So we're at x 8x minus 1 equals 16. We're going to add 1 to both sides. We get 8x equals 17. Divide by 8 both sides, x equals 17 eighths. And choice C is our answer in this case. And it makes sense because if we were to plug in 17 eighths here, we would get 8 times 17 eighths. We cancel the eighths. That would be 17 minus 1. 17 minus 1 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. Plus 4 equals 8. So it checks out. All right. Let's go on to question 15 here. Which graph best represents the solution for y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of 2x plus 1 minus 3? Well, 2x plus 1 minus 3. Well, one of the easiest ways that you can now greater than, greater than or equal to. So greater than means up top and equal to means a solid line and we have a solid line in each of these so it's going to have to be either a or c because b and d are less than because they're shaded under now how can you tell whether it's a or whether it's c well what we can do is basically punch it in on your calculator that would be a simple way to do it. There's a couple of ways to do it. I just want to give you one of the most simpler ways. Let me clear out what I have in here previously. So if I put an absolute value, so I go math, num, absolute value, and then I go 2x plus 1 minus 3. Let's see what that graph looks like. Now, does that match A or C? Looks like it matches A to me. And then greater than is going to be what's shaded in here, because less than would be what would be here. So A is our choice. Make sense? OK, let's move on to number 16. Directions, click on the correct answer. What is the solution set to x squared equals 16 minus 4x? What this looks like is I need to set this equation equal to 0, then use quadratic formula. Okay, so x squared, yeah, so basically, if I subtract 16 and add 4x on both sides, I would get x squared plus 4x minus 16 equals 0. So this is set up to use the quadratic formula. 
and the quadratic formula, which is on your formula sheet right here. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A. Okay? Now, my A is my X, 1. My B is my 4. And my C is my negative 16. So, if I plug this into quadratic formula, negative B, negative 4, plus or minus the square root of 4 squared, minus 4 times a, 1, times c, negative 16, all over 2a, 2 times 1, okay? So that gives me negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 64. I get 64 because negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 16 is a positive 64, all right? So move on. Negative 4 plus or minus the square root, 16 plus 64 is 80, over 2, right? Now, radical 80, you need to know how to simplify your radicals. I would break down radical 80 as the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. So negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 times the square root of 5 over 2. And then radical 16 is simply 4 when we simplify it. So that's going to be negative 4 plus or minus... 4 radical 5 over 2, then I can simplify this because negative 4 over 2 is just negative 2. And then, again, plus or minus 4 over 2 is just 2. So negative 2 plus or minus 2 radical 5. And we look at our answer choices. That's the fourth choice down, negative 2 plus or minus 2 radical 5. So with something like this, you need to know how to use the quadratic formula, and simplify radicals to answer. All right, let's go on to question 17. Hmm. What is the solution set for the cubed root of 1 fourth x plus 3 equals 2? Well, I have a cubed root here. What I want to do is get rid of that radical. So basically, I'm going to cube both sides of the equation. The cube root of anything cubed is simply what's under the radical. So when I cube it, I get 1 fourth x plus 3. I cubed it 2 cubed, 2 cubed is 8. So 1 fourth x plus 3 equals 8. I would subtract 3 both sides. I would have 1 fourth x equals 5. And in order to get the x by itself, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction. So 1 fourth times 4, just 1, cancels each other out, just x. 5 times 4 is 20. Boom, choice C is 20. Easy one, easy peasy. All right, let's go on to question 18. What is the solution to the absolute value of x plus 4 is less than 2? If we set this up here, first we look to see if there's any extenuating circumstances such as a no solution or all solutions. Here we have, now absolute value is always positive. This is a positive number, so we don't have any extenuating circumstances or special cases. So we'll just work this through. I would break this absolute value of x plus 4 less than 2 into two separate equations. x plus 4 less than 2, or x plus 4, flip the inequality, greater than negative 2, and then solve individually. Here, I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. I would get x is less than negative 2. Here, again, I would subtract 4 on both sides. x is greater than negative 6. So x is greater than negative 6, and x is less than negative 2, which happened to be choice B. It's not or, it's and. It says or here, but when you put them together, anything that is greater than negative 6 and less than negative 2 fits this criteria, so it's B, not A. Okay, let's go on to question 19. The graph of g of x is shown, which appears to be a solution of g of x equals 0. So we're looking for zeros here. All right, so it looks like 1, 2 on this parabola. Well, it looks like 1, 
is a zero, positive one, and it looks like negative one, negative two, negative three, negative three. So positive one and negative three. Negative three, choice A. That one was really simple, okay? Let's go on to 20. Given x plus y plus 10 equals zero, x squared plus y minus two is zero. What are the x values for the solutions to the given system of the equations? Now, a couple of ways you can work this out. Now, what you can do, since these both equal y, you can set them equal to each other, work them out that way, and you'll get the answers. Or a faster method, I think, is if you go on calculator, after you maneuver both of these, because if I subtract x and subtract 10, wouldn't that be y equals negative x minus 10? And then here, if I were to add 2 and subtract x squared, wouldn't that be y equals negative x squared plus 2? So now that those both equal y, let me clear this out, I'm going to put this first equation in y1, this second in y2. I'm going to see where they intersect. Where they intersect is going to give me my answers. So y equals negative x minus 10 in y1 y equals negative x squared plus 2 and y2, all right? Let me graph it. Let's see what we get here. Oh, that second one I can't see, so I'm going to need to basically expand my graph. And what I did to expand my graph, I just basically hit zoom and option three zoom out because I wanted to zoom out and see the graph. So now I see that it does cross in two separate places. So let me find out what those places are. I would go to second, trace, intersect, because I want to see where they intersect. Go here, get my first bound, here, get my second bound and guess. So it says x equals 3, y equals, ooh, negative 3, and y equals negative 7. So negative 3 is an x. So since negative 3 is an x, that means my options are going to be either a or b. Now I need to find my second x. So I would go to second, trace, intersect. Come on over here. Right down. Right down. Guess. Now it says x is 4, y is negative 14. So my second x is 4. The only option that has x as negative 3 and 4 is option B. Okay, so that's questions 11 through 20. Next video will be questions 21 through 30. See you on the next video.